<clears throat> we're moving into our next two phyla, <clears throat> chapter 25, and this is going to be uh, starting with our flatworms. So our flatworm phyla is platyhelminthes. Platy means flat, helminthes means worm. Platyhelminthes. The body structure is their acelomates. They're too flat. We've talked about this before. They are thin as a sheet of paper, and because of that, they have no body cavity. So they're considered to be acelomates. They don't have a coelom. They are bilaterally symmetrical. Now, we had our sponges that were asymmetrical, and then we had our jellyfish that were radially symmetrical. So here is our first animal that has bilateral. Because he has bilateral, there's going to be a head region. So this animal is cephalized. He has undergone cephalization. So there's going to be an anterior end. There's going to be a posterior end. There's going to be a belly side or ventral end. And then the back side will be the dorsal side. So he does have a lot more than the cnidarium. Also, during gastrulation, this animal forms three layers. So now we have an ectoderm, we have an endoderm, and we have a mesoderm. Okay, our free-living flatworms, that means they're not parasites. They're going to feed on dead or very slow-moving organisms. Here you can see what a flatworm looks like. He's really kind of cute. He's got two little eye spots. He looks like his eyes are crossed. And then underneath, you can see that he has a digestive, uh, the cavity is acelomate. He's too flat to have a true cavity, but there is a pharynx. Also, if you're looking at the ventral side, you can see that they're ganglia. Now, ganglia, guys, are nerve cells, but this is not a brain. This is very, very early nerves. And they are connected with, by what's called a nerve cord. So there is usually two nerve cords running down each side of the body. And then the ganglia are attached. The excretory system is blown up. And the type of excretory system that they have actually have is called a flame cell. So they're able to get rid of their waste through those structures. Your parasitic flatworms have modified feeding structures. Um, they're called hooks and suckers, and they're unable to stay attached to their host. Also in this group are your um, tapeworms. Tapeworms are not nematodes. They're flatworms, and they definitely are a parasitic worm because you get them from eating undercooked meat, either undercooked beef or undercooked pork. And they have a head called a scolex. And then there are um, hooks in the scolex. So the hooks actually embed themselves in your intestine or your stomach. And then um, they have this great big, huge center called the sucker and they're sucking all the nutrition out. So people who have uh, tapeworms, they're not getting any of the, the nutrition from the food they're breaking down because that's all going to the worm. Now, their respiration, circulation, and excretion is all happening by means of diffusion. So they do have these systems. This is mesoderm now. They do have them. But the diffusion moves dissolved oxygen and nutrients to all parts of the body. And the carbon dioxide and other waste are also going to be removed by diffusion. So remember, diffusion is passive. You're going from an area that's high concentration to low. So as the concentration of oxygen is high, it will diffuse outward. And the same with the carbon dioxide. All right, here is an up um, view of your flatworm platyhelminthes. 
This little worm is actually called a planaria worm, P-L-A-N-A-R-I-A. And planaria have these two little eye spots. And what's unique about planaria, and if we were in the lab, I would have ordered you some, but you can take, they're capable of regeneration. So you can actually take a razor blade, they're very, very thin, and cut here between his eyes all the way to here. I would say maybe, you know, just a few inches down. And then this side produces a head, this side produces a head, and then it just, it keeps on. So planaria are um, special little worms that look like they're cross-eyed because they have these two eye spots, which is totally sensory. It's not detecting sight, but they are capable of generating their heads. So you can cut down and then it doesn't take too long in the lab. You don't have to even wait a day. You can watch a head form in this direction and then a head form in the opposite direction. All right, your flame cells is what they're trying to show you here. This is for moving liquid waste out of the body um, and maintaining water balance. So with your flatworm now, there's only one opening, and that's going to be the mouth. So the flatworm has a two-way gut. We don't have a mouth and an anal opening in this animal. All right, now responding to stimuli, they do have some ganglia. And like I said, the ganglia is nothing more than uh, nerve cells. It's not any um, sophisticated brain-like organ. It's just cells that allow them to react and respond to stimuli. And that may be finding food. It may be finding the correct habitat. But... It is definitely a um, just a sensory type of tissue.